Hello and welcome to Cooking the Books with Heather. Today we are going to be making um, short rib pot pie out of Ashley Christensen's Pools Diner Cookbook. This recipe I think has a record number of other recipes that it refers to in the recipe itself. So besides making the crust, which is in this recipe, and the filling, there are pieces of the filling that are complete separate recipes in the book. Now, there are four, four recipes. The uh, short ribs, the easy way, which we have already made, and I will refer to that below if you wanna take a look. Um, there's diced charred onion, which we haven't made it from the book, but it was sort of part of two other recipes that we've done. So um, I don't think I'm going to make that separately. I'm probably not going to show you guys what I did with it with that, but I will link the um, what we've done, what we did for the. Uh, I think it was uh, summer squash, that also had charred onion in it. So there's that, and then there is the rich beef stock, which I am currently making, still simmering away. It is like 8.30 at night and we've been making it since about noon. It takes, I don't know, it'll take something like 10 hours and excuse my mixologist in the corner, um, out of frame. Uh, and then there is roasted garlic butter, which not super difficult, but also a little bit more difficult than I would have expected and required lots of um, machinery. So you'll see the recipes for the rich beef stock and the roasted garlic butter separately before this, but we are making them for this recipe. Now I can actually start. Uh, what I'm doing right now is making the cornmeal crust. And so, this has to sit in the freezer for like an hour, something like three separate times, in the refrigerator or the freezer three separate times. But it's fairly simple other than that. Um, oh, I forgot, I almost forgot my salt. Let me get that. But I have regular all-purpose flour and some fine ground cornmeal. It's what I had in the cabinet because we're not going to the grocery store right now because we are currently in social distancing mode because of COVID. So not a bad time to make a recipe like this, I guess, if you have all the ingredients at the house. So one second. So to my cornmeal and flour, I'm just going to add the salt that it requires and I'm going to whisk this up to you know incorporate it and break up any lumps this is sort of a sifting step when I don't want to get out the sifter which is most of the time this is what I do generally all right so I've done that and now um, I just add the butter I'm gonna I've got my butter um, cut up into little squares. I'm just going to add it and sort of make sure they're broken up. And then this whole thing, I'm gonna to toss it up a little bit, but it goes into the freezer for an hour. So I'm sure a little bit more would not be amiss, but I think the point it, for this is to make sure everything is as cold as possible so the butter doesn't melt and you get the flakiest crust you possibly can. So I'm going to rinse off my hands, put this in the freezer and we'll be back in about an hour. The crust mixture has been in the freezer for about an hour and now we're going to make it kind of like we did the uh, pie crust. Oh, there's a little water in my dish, but that's right. Uh, the pool's pie crust and we're going to pulse it in the food processor until it breaks up, and then we're gonna add water. So. So now we're gonna pulse this, um, and while pulsing, 
until it's about pea size. The butter is pea size pieces. That was unsalted butter, by the way. So we're gonna pulse it until it's in pea size pieces and we're gonna start drizzling in a tablespoon of water at a time until when it's pinched, it sticks together. It's always more water than she says for me, for some reason, whatever. So we're gonna pulse this. That started to go and now I am going to start putting in a tablespoon of ice water at a time. goes everywhere right now. I'm not trying to make this tiny pieces. Uh, they kind of come together, but it's still really dry. feeling a little bit, yeah, a little bit more almost sticky, but not quite when I stick it together, but it feels like it will hold its shape. I'm gonna call that done. So now I'm gonna clean off my work surface and I'm gonna put down some plastic wrap because when it's done, we're gonna sort of shape it into a disc, wrap it in plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator overnight, at least an hour up to overnight. I got another tablespoon if I were you, but I'm not. I love you. S T F U, you are the cook. I know, I know you're the uh, the pastry. Press out and press it together into a disc. My uh pastry chef back there doesn't think that this is done, that it needs another tablespoon of water. All right, we're gonna add another tablespoon. It is sort of coming together, but I do tend to make things a little, well, I feel like my flour tends to be a little extra dry, so. There we go. Right, so we're gonna put another tablespoon in. When I squeeze it, I swear it feels like dough, like a pie dough. So we'll see, we'll see. So I'm gonna just sort of form this into a disc and wrap it with this plastic wrap and probably another sheet just to make sure I have a good seal because the refrigerator tends to dry things out. So I don't want it dry out for sure. But I think, I think this is gonna be good. I think this is gonna be fine. All right. So that's our crust. I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator, like I said, overnight, but it should be at least an hour. So we'll be back tomorrow to show you what's next. My crust has been in the refrigerator um, overnight. It's the next day, the evening. I'm hoping to eat this today. Oh my goodness. So we're gonna roll out the pie crust. Um, so, oh yeah, first I need to put down some flour. This is just rolling out crust, just like always. I think she says a quarter inch thick. So hopefully our crust is good and hydrated and not too crumbly. Um, and you can cut this part out. Just don't start talking until you're upright. Alright, so yes, a quarter inch thick. And wish me luck. Alright. 
roll up my sleeves here. Um, get a little bit of flour on the top. And move that out of my way so I don't roll all over it. All right. It's still pretty cold, but it seems to be staying together, so that's a good thing. I really only need it to be about um, eight inches round because of the dish that I'm, I'm cooking it in, but we're gonna cut it to fit. So you're supposed to cut a round parchment paper half an inch smaller than the diameter of the dish that you're planning to cook it in. I've got my dish here. So I did the I did the standard about to make a snowflake when you were a kid thing, folded it into eighths, uh, put the point in the middle, sort of cut around it, and then just trimmed until I had a nice relatively round um, bit of pastry or bit of parchment. And now I'm going to cut my pastry um, using this as a template. using my pizza wheel. Let's try not to move this once I start cutting. I think this will be okay. Okay, so now we have a rough circle here and this is pastry we won't be using for this. I don't know, I'll see if I can think of something to do with that. Um, I need to transfer this onto the parchment onto a sheet pan. So I have my sheet pan and put my parchment down and then hopefully this will move. Seems pretty sturdy. I think I'm going to put it bottom side up because that will be the pretty side. Um, probably brush some of that off later anyway and then put it on top of my parchment there we go now this goes into the freezer for another hour 